Hello everyone, welcome to BA Consulting Pro. This is part third of data flows under Power Query Tutorials. In today's video, we will learn analytical versus standard data flows, incremental data of incremental refresh in data flows, data flow licenses, and integration. So what are you waiting for? Let's get started. If you are over here for the very first time, please consider to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest updates and videos. Analytical versus standard data flows. Firstly, we are going to learn what are standard data flows. A standard data flow loads data to dataverse tables. Standard data flows can only be created in Power Apps. One benefit of creating this type of data flow is that any application that depends on data in Dataverse can work with the data created by standard data flows. Typical applications that live rich Dataverse tables are Power Apps, Power Automate, AI Builder, and Power Virtual Agents. So you can go to your Power Apps. There you can get the data from the data tab. Then you have to select data flows and there you can create a new data flow. There are multiple versions of standard data flows. As you can see on your screen, generally you will see standard v2 or standard v1. Now let's, what are the difference between the standard v1 and standard v2? The very first comes the maximum number of data flows that can be saved with automatic schedule per customer tenant. It's limited to 50 for v1, however for v2 it's unlimited. Number two is the maximum number of records ingested per query per table. That has limit of 500k in case of standard v1, while it's unlimited in case of standard v2. Another one is ingestion speed into data wars, which is baseline performance in case of standard v1. However, if you will choose to go to standard v2, there you will get improved performance by a few factors. Actual results may vary and depend on characteristics of the data ingested and load on data was service at the time of ingestion. Another one is incremental refresh policy, which is not supported for standard v1, however it's supported for v2. In case your data set size is going to increase and you want to only load the part of the data, not the entire data during the refresh, then you should implement the incremental refresh policy and it's only supported by standard v2. Lastly is the resiliency. When data was service protection limits are encountered, a record will be retired up to three times. So those were the feature comparison for standard data flow versions. Now let's talk about the analytical data flows. An analytical data flow loads data to storage types optimized for analytics, that is Azure Data Lake Storage. Microsoft Power Platform environments and Power BI workspaces provide customers with a managed analytical storage location that's bundled with those product licenses. In addition, customers can link their organization's Azure Data Lake storage account as a destination for data flows. Analytical data flows are capable additional analytical features. For example, integration with Power BI's AI feature or use of computed entities, you can create analytical data flows in Power BI. As you can see on my screen, by default, they load the data to Power BI's managed storage but you can also configure Power BI to store the data in the organization's Azure Data Lake storage that you can do on Microsoft Power BI portal. You can also create analytical data flows in Power Apps and Dynamic 365 customer insight portals as you can see at the bottom snapshot of your screen. When you are creating a data flow in Power Apps portal, you can choose between Dataverse, Manages Analytical Storage, or in your organization's Azure Data Lake storage account. So that's up to you which one you are going to choose. Let's talk about the difference between standard versus analytical data flows. So as you can see on your screen, you can create standard data flows in Power Platform data flows, while analytical data flows can be created in Power BI data flows, 
Power Platform data flows by selecting the analytical checkbox when you're creating the data flow. Storage I have already discussed with you. In case of standard, you will only get a Dataverse option. Power Query transformations is available for both standard versus analytical one. If we talk about the AI function, that is artificial intelligence functions, for example, cognitive search or voice text analytics, etc., you will get only in analytical one. Also, computed entity would be available only in analytical data flows. If we talk about the usage, then can be used in other applications. That means you can use the standard one through data wars into other application. However, in case of analytical one, data flows can be only used in Power BI, Power Platform data flows, or Power BI external data flows. You can use through Azure Data Lake storage. Mapping is available for both for the entities. And if we talk about the incremental refresh, so here you should note that for standard one, default incremental load is possible, but possible to change using the delete rows that no longer exist in the query output checkbox at the load setting. However, in case of analytical default for load, possible to set up an incremental policy by setting up the incremental refresh in the data flow settings. Schedule refresh is available for both. However, in case of analytical one, the possibility of notifying the data flow owners upon the failure is also available, which is not in standard data flows. Using incremental refresh with data flows. With data flows, you can bring large amount of data in Power BI or your organization's provided storage. In some cases, however, it is not practical to update a full copy of source data in each refresh. A good alternative is incremental refresh, which provided the benefits of refresh occur faster, refresh is more reliable, and resource consumption is reduced. So let's see how to do that. I'm on my Power BI service portal. Here, I'll go to my data flow, which I have created earlier. So let me go into that. This is the country analysis data flows that I have created earlier. You can click on your data flows that you have created. And under action tab, you can click this last button and here you will find incremental refresh settings. You can switch it on, then you can select the separate fields as per your data refresh policy. I have already created a video on incremental refresh in Power BI, which is similar to this data flow incremental refresh. I'll provide you a link in the description section. You can go and check that out. Managing your data flows. You can manage any data flow you created from the data flows preview tab. Here you can see on your screen the status of all the data flows. When your data flow was last refreshed, and take action from the action bar. In the last refresh column, you can see when your data was last refreshed. If your refresh failed, an error indication appears. If you select the error indication, the details of the error and recommended steps to address it appear. In the status column, you can see the current status of the data flow and possible states are refresh in progress that means your refresh is ongoing also you can edit rename refresh and delete your data flows if you remember in the last video i have explained how we can create data flows through microsoft teams so here you should remember data flows in teams are lightweight version of data flows in the maker portal and can only load data into dataverse for teams Data flows in Teams are optimized for one-time import of data, but you can refresh your data manually through the refresh button in the data flow management page. Integration. How Microsoft Power Platform data flows and Azure Data Factory wrangling data flows relate to each other. This is quite an interesting topic. Please pay attention on your screen. Microsoft Power Platform data flows and Azure Data Factory data flows are often considered to be doing the same thing, extracting data from the data sources, transforming the data, and loading the transformed data into a destination. However, there are differences in these two types of data flows, and you can have a solution implemented that works with a combination of these technologies. So here we are going to explain some of them. 
the very first on your left hand side of your screen is Power Platform Data Flows. Power Platform Data Flows are data transformation services empowered by the Power Query engine and hosted in the cloud. These data flows get data from the different data sources and after applying transformation, store it either in a database or in Azure Data Lake storage. However, as you can see on your right hand side, there is a data factory wrangling data flows. Data Factory is a cloud-based extract transform load that is ETL service that supports many different sources and destinations. There are two types of data flows under this technology, mapping data flows and wrangling data flows. Wrangling data flows are empowered by the Power Query engine for the data transformation. Now let's see what is common between these two. Power Platform data flows and Data Factory wrangling data flows are both useful for getting data from one or more sources, applying transformations on the data by using Power Query and loading the transformed data into dimensions. They both are empowered by using Power Query data transformation. Both are cloud-based technologies too. So these are their common feature. Now we'll see what are the differences between them. The very first is destination. In case of Power Platform data flows, Dataverse or Azure Data Lake storage is an option. However, in case of data factory wrangling data flows, you will get many destinations. Second is Power Query transformation. So in case of Power Platform data flows, all Power Query functions are supported. However, only a limited set of functions are supported in case of data factory wrangling data flows. When we talk about the sources, Many sources are supported for Power Platform data flows. However, only a few data sources are supported for data factory wrangling data flows. And lastly, about the scalability. In case of Power Platform data flows, it depends on the premium capacity and the use of the enhanced compute engine. However, in case of data factory wrangling data flows, it's highly scalable. So, at last, the question comes into our mind, which user persona is suited to which type of data flows? When should we use the data factory wrangling data flows or when should we use the Power Platform data flows? Well, if you are a citizen application developer or citizen data analyst with small scale to medium scale data to be integrated and transformed, you will find the Power Platform data flows more convenient. The large number of transformations are available, the ability to work with them without having developer knowledge, and the fact that data flows can be authored, monitored, and edited in Power BI or Power Platform. All are reasons that make Power Platform data flows a great data integration solution for this type of developer. However, if you are a data developer who are dealing with the big data and huge data sets, with a large number of rows to be ingested every time, you'll find the data factory wrangling data flows a better tool for the job. Wrangling data flow translates M generated by the Power Query online mashup editor into Spark code for cloud scale execution. Working with Azure portal to author, monitor, and edit wrangling data flow requires a higher developer learning curve than the experience in Power Platform data flows. Wrangling data flows are best suited for this type of audience. Now, I hope it's clear for you which type of data flow you should use for which type of work and who should use it. In our upcoming video, we are going to discuss about troubleshooting data flows. We will see the different scenarios when you can expect an error and what would be the resolution for this one. So stay tuned for our next video.